We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI, 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and three times a week on the Internet on knookmedia.com. Our guest by phone, and I'm having a hard time uh, reading my notes because my, I'm in tears. I'm laughing so hard. Well, he tells the friend, truth. That's he the is. Thing. He is. A man uh, with an opinion who can express it. Our old friend, but he'll, Wayne Allen. But Root. he'll get audited again and again. Yeah, and guess <laughs> what? If if he does decide to run against Harry Reid, which I would do everything I could to support him, they'd use the first 20 minutes of the show. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Go ahead, Clay. <laughs> no, what about, um, what about Scott Walker in Wisconsin? He's got some problems there, doesn't he? Scott Walker is one of the ones who has a problem. There's another tough state, Wisconsin. You know, every union in the country has contributed to uh, Scott Walker's opponent. So he's fighting money from all over the United States, all these unions. And that's the problem with politics. Harry Reid criticizes the Koch brothers. And meanwhile, unions are far worse than the Koch brothers. Harry Reid is far worse than the Koch brothers. Here's a guy criticizing the money of the Koch brothers. And Harry Reid's super PAC has put more money into Democratic campaigns than the Koch brothers have put into Republican campaigns. So it's all a big joke. And they know it's a big joke. And, um, you know, Wisconsin is problematic. I mean, Walker may pull it out. If he does, it'll be by the skin of his chinny chin chin. It'll be by his liver, you know, but I'm hoping he does. But he's done more. We may lose it, but we're sure not losing the House and we're going to get the Senate. So that's the story. Walker has done more for Wisconsin than anybody has done. He turned that whole state around and it's these teachers unions and all these unions and all they want is the freebies. It's really sad. Well, yeah, yeah. just don't forget the exact numbers. There was a $3 billion deficit, deficit in Wisconsin when Walker passed a series of very mild reforms against unions, basically requiring the teachers and the other union members to just put a li- to contribute just a little bit more to their own health care and their own retirement. And, and just with that little minor tweak, he turned a $3 billion deficit into a $1 billion surplus and tried to give the money back to the taxpayers. I don't even know if he was successful. That's something I don't know. I remember he was trying to give $800 million back to the taxpayers of Wisconsin. I don't know if they ever let him or not. Uh, but, but the end result was was what a wonderful thing to, to brag about. You know, what a platform to win elections by a landslide. Sure. And yet he's fighting for his life. So mm-hmm. it just goes to show you what terrible people are in these unions. By the way, same type of people as the nurse in Maine. You know what I'm talking about? The nurse who got back from Liberia and yes. the, uh, and the uh, Ebola zone? Right. Mm-hmm. You know what she's doing now? Suing. Well, here's the thing. First, she got off in Newark Airport, and they put her into immediate quarantine, right? They put her in a tent, and, and she had an immediate quarantine for 21 days, and she threatened to sue, and she made a big stink, and she met with the media, and eventually they let her go as long as she'd go back home to Maine and self-quarantine in her own house for 21 days, and she said yes. Now she's protesting that she won't even do it in her own house. She said, how ridiculous. If I want to go out to eat, I'll go out to eat. If I want to go shopping, I'll go shopping. I'm not listening to these people. You know, you're not the boss of my life. That's what she actually said. This woman is so reckless and so selfish that she doesn't care that she could get people killed. She has every right to be, by the way, a nice person and a selfless person and go to Liberia and treat Ebola victims. What she doesn't have a right to do is come back from treating Ebola victims and come back from the dangerous, deadly Ebola zone and expose my children and your children to Ebola. She has no right to do that. And that's the most irresponsible, <clears throat> selfish woman I've ever seen. And that's pretty typical of what I think most Democrats are like. I agree. Wayne, I've got a question for you. Here's my concern. Let's, let's assume we win the Senate. We've got everything. Thing, okay, are the Republicans going to be any better, really, than the Democrats are in the long term? I mean, you know, last time we had control of everything, we really didn't do a whole lot. Well, there's your there's your million dollar question. You know, don't forget, I wrote a book called The Murder of the Middle Class. It's a national bestseller. Yeah, and I want to talk and, about that book. And mm-hmm. I'd love everyone to go get a copy, but I'm not bringing it up so you buy a copy. I'm bringing it up because in the book is what you're talking about. I mean, I, I think the Republican Party is, is far better than the Democratic Party, but it's still part of the problem. They're all in Washington. You know, they're all D.C. people, D.C. politicians, and they all uh, dance to the tune of lobbyists and big corporations, and they don't care about the average person, the average American, the average taxpayer, the average voter. means nothing to them. And so do I like Republicans better than Democrats? Sure. Do I want to block Obama from his communist agenda? Absolutely. But will Republicans be much better? No. But here's my argument. We now have a choice of two in this country, like it or not. Moderate Democrats or communists. 
the moderate Democrats are the Republican Party in most cases, right. and the communists are the Democratic Party. So would I rather have a moderate Democrat like Scoop Jackson in the old days, who does love America, who does support national defense, and who does want to ban planes from the Ebola zone, and who doesn't want to raise taxes dramatically on the only people who create jobs, business owners? Yeah, I'll take a blue dog Democrat over a, over a, over a communist Democrat any day of the week. And unfortunately, most Republicans are basically blue dog moderate Democrats now. So that's what you get with a McCain and a Lindsey Graham exactly. uh, here in Nevada. We have a guy running for lieutenant governor, Mark Hutchinson. You know, they're, they're kind of wishy-washy blue dog Democrats running as Republicans who always support corporate interests. That's not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than communists that want to let planes fly into the Ebola zone. And then on top of that, want to send 4,000 troops that could be your son or daughter into the Ebola zone to go die and be exposed to an invisible enemy, and who now say they want foreign Ebola victims to be shipped by, by uh, special air transport at a cost of 200000 a victim to the United States for treatment against Ebola. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing, folks. No one who's sane could possibly come to that decision. We're having a conversation with a man who really needs to come out of his shell a little more. <laughs> Wayne Allen Root, author of a great, great new book I highly recommend, Murder of the Middle Class. It's a great book. And, Wayne, you gave those books away for the longest time. And I uh, had several of my uh, former guests and clients have gotten that book from you. Thank you very much. You know, actually, we gave away, last time we had him on the show, we gave away about 50 or 60 books. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Yeah. Well, that's great. Hey, and you know, I want to get it in people's hands so they, they understand what's going on in the world, because what's happening right now is everything I wrote about. I didn't even know about Ebola. It didn't exist when I, when I was writing this book in December and January and February. It didn't exist, uh, you know, as a threat to the United States, and it didn't even exist in general. I mean, I think maybe there was some mention of it just starting in Africa in, like, February or March, and that was when I was handing my manuscript to the publisher. So I didn't even know about it, but isn't this the murder of the middle class when you when you allow people to run around our country coming back from the Ebola zone who uh, have not been through a quarantine? Isn't it the murder of the middle class when you leave the Mexican border open and you allow anyone to come across and they all want free medical, free education, free health care, free everything, free uh, uh, Obama phones and free contraception, and uh, they want aid to dependent children and food stamps? Isn't that the murder of the middle class? And how about if Obama creates amnesty for tens of millions of people, they say 34 million. I thought Democrats claim there's only 10 to 12 million illegals in the United States. Well, I've always said that's a lie. There's probably the 34 million is probably the right figure. That's how many people Obama's getting ready to give amnesty to. So there must be 34 million in the United States. Well, they're going to take your jobs, folks. That they, is the murder of the middle class. They Everything are, I wrote about, I didn't even know about any of this. I didn't know that someone with Ebola might walk across the border. I didn't know that ISIS, at the time, ISIS didn't even exist, didn't even have the name. I didn't know they were going to walk across the border and do a terrorist attack in America at any minute because the border is wide open. Everything Obama's doing is what I predicted, the murder of the middle class. We don't have illegals, Wayne. We have new voters. <laughs> yeah, and, and new lawyers. I hear in California they've actually, for the first time ever, they've given an illegal alien uh, the right to be, practice as an attorney in California. Can right. you imagine the insanity of the way liberals think? So what you're telling me now is you can be a criminal, because by definition an illegal immigrant or an illegal alien broke the law and is a criminal walking around the United States, and a criminal is allowed to get a law degree and practice in front of a court. Wow. This is just stunning, folks. This is the end of America. <laughs> it isn't going to exist anymore, folks. You can't let criminals get law degrees and call that social justice. I'm sorry. You know, I think the reason we really need to win the Senate more than anything else is for the future appointment of judges. Oh, no question about That's it. That's the key here. Mm -hmm. Well, judges, and how about, you know, all the appointees Obama makes sure he doesn't need the Congress's <laughs> approval, like, you know, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. You know, they're going to legislate corporations to the point where they can't stay in business anymore. Or every product you buy, a pencil, you know, because it has lead in it, a pencil that costs a penny, so you could buy a hundred of them for a, for, for a buck, all of a sudden a pencil is going to be 50 cents. You know, it'll go up by 50, you know, a multiple of 50. A loaf of bread will have something in it, or it's made at a plant that puts some sort of pollutant in the air. And if you want to get extreme and radical, you can legislate that pollutant out of business or the plant can continue in operation but they got to charge you a hundred dollars for a loaf of bread well guess what that's the 
end of the American economy. And that's what these people are looking to do. They're insane, and they're criminals, and they're frauds, and they're communists. And that's who Obama appoints on a daily basis. No question about it. Wayne, we've got to let you go, but two things. If you do decide to run against Harry Reid, please let us know. We're going to have you on monthly, definitely. The name of the book is Murder of the Middle Class. Wayne Allen Root, we love having him on. Wayne, hope to talk to you in a couple weeks.